You're listening to You're listening to the to the Beer O'Clock the Beer O'Clock Show. You're listening to the Beer O'Clock Show. It's Beer O'Clock and this is the Beer O'Clock Show here every week sampling brews from around the country, continent, and indeed world. My name is Mark, and joining me, sporting his Tom Jones wig and swively swively hips. It's Steve. Hello, Steve. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? I'm all right, mate. How are you? I'm good. Was you hoping for a Tom Jones impression there? <laughs> that, that's not going to happen. It I wouldn't don't be do unusual. Accents. It wouldn't, would it's it? Not at unusual. All. <laughs> this week, we're continuing our Six Nations series with a trip to Wales and the Way and Brewery's Pamplemousse. Now, Steve says that's not a Welsh accent, and I, I see it as... I don't. I don't think it is. I don't. I think that's as far away from a Welsh accent as you can possibly get, mate. To be honest with you, uh, an accent from down the valleys. I'm sure that any Welsh listeners can <laughs> let me know well, well, if it's as bad let's, as let's my ask Scottish them, accent. Shall we? So, Sparky, Sparky, right? I know you're out there. I know you listen, mate. Please tweet us and let us know what you think of Mark's Welsh accent. Has he upset another entire home country's worth of listeners? Oh dear! I just think I managed to get through the entire Italian season without doing an Italian accent. Yeah, you did. That's that's to be to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, before we get started with the main show, um, we're going to do our imitation of the Guardian now and issue a correction over last week's show, <laughs> thanks to some input from a very clever listener and an all-round good boy, Stevie. What was that, mate? Um, yeah, it was just uh, obviously last week we did Ritorto Krakatoa, uh, the Italian IPA, um, and it would appear that our, that our, I say our, that's the collective we, um, my website research was a little bit off because um, Andy from Beers from Italy got in touch um, with, with just a few points that he wanted to, to make about last week's beer. So uh, Ritorto is the trading name of Bira Piacenza. Um, who are the company that actually own all the brewing equipment. So Ritorto is just their trading name. Um, um, yeah, hence why we couldn't really find too much about Ritorto Brewery because it doesn't actually exist. Right. Um, also that the beers are available in selected cafes, bars, pubs and bottle shops now um, in the UK and also that for people that are in London and frequent Mother Kelly's, um, Ritorto's Morning Glory will soon be on tap at Mother Kelly's oh, along cool. with a range of their other beers. So thanks to Andy for just letting us know those points. Um, hopefully that now fulfills everyone's Italian dream. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. You're an all-round good chap. Now, Steve, how was your beery week, buddy? It was really good, actually. I um kind of may have destroyed myself a little bit on <laughs> on on Friday night. Um, I managed to get my hands on a couple of the the, the Beaver Town Triple IPAs, the Power of the Voodoo. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is the next in the series up from Skull King, which we did a few weeks ago. Um, I got I had one the day I bought it because I needed to get into it straight away, and it was just an amazing beer, just this tropical goodness in a can. Um, if you think of of how good Skull King was, and then just hop that a little bit more, um, it was just amazing. Um, but then I decided to take that a step further, and on. Um, <laughs> On Friday night, I decided I was going to do what I, I called a vertical IPA tasting. So, so basically, I started with uh, a punk IPA, uh, and then I had a halcyon being an imperial IPA, which I classed as being slightly different from a double. <laughs> then then I had my final of Foam and Fury double IPA, and then I finished off with the, the, the Beaver Town Power to the Voodoo triple IPA. That little foursome not being enough for me at that point i then cracked a bottle of the uh the siren daydream bar or the siren da barrel aged daydream um which weighed in at 13 and a half percent and um very shortly after i said good night <laughs> um but the just just got to say that the um we were amazed by the uh the daydream when we did it on show 100 the barrel aged version is all that and more it's just got this lovely toasted sort of marshmallow coconutty to it and it just kind of made me think of sitting around a campfire roasting your marshmallows on the campfire it was absolutely spot on oh that sounds what lovely a, yeah beautiful stuff what about what about yourself mate what have you been up to this week um well i only had a couple um well, apart from I had a shiello in in, um, in a bar in Bury St Edmunds. Went there for my wife's birthday lunch. But I 
We went to Waitrose in Berry, and I found a Hitach Hitachino Nest White Ale. Um, Hitachino being from no it's from from Kiyuchi Brewery, which is a Japanese brewery. Yeah. Um, and that was really nice. Um, obviously white ale, so it's nice and pale, light, faint fruitiness all the way through it. Really, really drinkable. You can get it in Waitrose. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you don't you don't see many like non lagery Asian beers over here. I've I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of chatter about that on Twitter. Um, yeah, it's apparently quite a good beer that one. Yeah, and I was listening to the latest beer talkers today, and Sam had Hitachino Red Rice Ale. Yes, that yeah. He, he picked up from he bought he's in a wine shop in London, so they're obviously around. So if if you see one of them, go get it. And it's a really cute bottle top as well, a little owl on it. Um, and the other one of note that I had was the Holy Cowbell India Stout from Beaver Town that I picked up a, like a few weeks ago. And fuck me, Dad, I need more cowbell <laughs> in my life. That that was gorgeous. It was tremendous beer. <laughs> Cow cowbell is an amazing beer. Yeah. It it really is. It was it was stunning. But that was basically all all that is worth talking about. Right. Got some news, mate? Of course. <laughs> Here's your pips. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, so first up in this week's news, uh, Wold Top Brewery, Brewery, who are based in North Yorkshire, are celebrating after being shortlisted for two business awards. Um, the first one that they've been shortlisted for is being the Best Small Family Business category in the Red Ribbon Awards, which is the UK's only national awards that recognise the achievements of family-run companies. Um, and they've also been recognised for their export growth um, by winning a place in the Yorkshire Business Insider Emerging Explorer Awards. Um, more information about World Top Brewery at worldtopbrewery.co.uk. Uh, Sam Brooks are running their annual Beer by the River. Um, so this is Sam Brooks in London um, run an annual event with the, I believe it's with the National Trust. Um, it's a two-day festival um, running on the 4th and 5th of September this year. Day tickets are priced at a fiver each. If you get in now, they're the early bird tickets. Standard prices go up to eight quid. You can get a ticket for both days for about a tenner by the looks of it. But you can find out more details about that either on Sandbrook's website or on eventbrite.co.uk. Um, there has been an announcement this week, so following on from the mini-sode that we did towards the end of last season uh, about the United Craft Brewers Association, they now have a website that, that's live and they're inviting um, UK craft breweries to sign up. Um, basically, not a lot on there at the moment, but apart from a, sta a statement, key points in the statement are that they're looking for a community here in the UK that's dedicated to the interests of craft breweries and that fits in line with their core values uh, the mission statement is to promote and protect the interest of British craft brewers, their beers and the community of beer enthusiasts and on the 1st of July they'll be launching a full website so you can check out their website now at unitedcraftbrewers.com Com, and you can also go back and listen to our mini-sode where we had the exclusive scoop and interview with um, Logan from Beavertown. And then finally in this week's news, uh, just a bit of a podcast roundup. What's What's been going on in this last week or so? So we've had new episodes from Ian at 11pm somewhere, which was a little bit ranty, it's got to be said. He did go off on one, but it was nice to listen to Ian and, and have him back in his old ranty way. Um, <laughs> there's also been a new episode from uh, Stephen Rowland. Uh, they've broken the 20-minute mark for the first time oh, ever wow. with one of their podcasts Settle down, boys. this week. Yeah, quite, quite an interesting <laughs> listen actually um only because they had personal involvement with the brewery that was involved and they and they knew of it so they were able to talk a lot more about it but it was nice listening to them ramble on for for a while <laughs> um and also the one that you just mentioned as well the, the the beer talkers latest episode which i found really interesting um they've they've done a two-part episode which is all about um beer in the digital age and and i found that quite an interesting listen um, yeah. So give give those a listen. Um, you can find the links to all the best beery podcasts on our website. And Sam on Beer Talkers has a, a very entertaining rant about a certain web app. Sorry, iPhone app community. 
<laughs> yes, yes, he does. And and I've been tempted just to just completely spam Sam's <laughs> timeline now with images of, of beers and, and, and check-ins from Untapped. But it's well worth a listen just to, uh, to, to, to see an objective view to Untapped, I think. <laughs> right. Hop topic. Yes, do we mate. have a hop so... topic? We we do. We First haven't worked all, out the actually... segue for this yet. <laughs> we, we we haven't. We're still working on. We're still working on this. Hop one. topic. We're, we're... Yeah, maybe a singy thing yeah, or maybe, I, I don't yeah. know, a, a, a little something. Anyway, we had a couple of people interact with us from, from last week's <gasps> top, top, topic. So, so last week we were talking about Meet the Brewers and um, should you pay for them, how much you would be willing to pay for them, and if you paid for them, do you expect to get something free in return in terms of tasters of drinks? So um, Miles Lambert, our, our number one fan, at Miles Lambert um, said that he had an experience recently where uh, he went to a Meet the Brewer, which was with Logan Plant from Beavertown. Uh, it was free entry, but as they arrived, they were handed a can of Gamma Ray um, as they walked in the door. And then they were expected to pay for speciality beers that had been provided for the evening. So some of the Beavertown range that you would probably normally only get at their tap house or at the festivals. Mm -hmm. And he said he was quite happy to pay for those beers because obviously they're special ones yeah. and, and you wouldn't normally see them. Um, and then also um, Martin Oates, who can be found at Twitter at MJPO007, um, said that a reasonable, reasonable fee is okay. Um, but free tasters should be included. Um, as usually, from his experience of being in London, um, these things tend to be held in pricey bars where yeah. you do end up paying a fortune for the drinks. So I, th I think we've got a bit of a balance there in, in mm -hmm. terms of what people fed back from last week's Hot Topic. This week's Hot Topic is mm, interesting. We This is something we might have touched on a few weeks ago in the news, but it's also re very relevant to, to something that's happened today as in monday the day that we're recording so and it was also suggested to us by martin oates who when he commented on last week's he, he asked us the question about this week's one so the question was beer festivals and what's a reasonable fee to enter a beer festival now obviously in the last few days we've seen tickets go on sale for the craft beer co's london craft beer carnival or whatever it's going to be called now this is the thing that Tickets are 50 quid a session. You, you don't buy your beers once you're in there. You buy your tickets and it's all done. Flip side of that is they went on sale on Friday and I've seen very few people tweeting about buying tickets and that they're going to the festival. The flip side of it is today the Indie Man tickets went on sale at 9 o'clock. The website broke at 30 seconds past 9. Um, <laughs> and then my feed on Twitter was alive with people sharing which sessions they had got for indie man obviously indie man ticket pricing is a little bit different you i've paid i've bought three sessions um and i've paid about 40 quid for those three sessions which i'm mm -hmm. quite happy to and i'll probably spend about the same if not a little bit more again on beer so i suppose this week's question is what's a reasonable fee mate what do you think is a reasonable fee to to enter a beer festival we're not fucking 50 quid <laughs> <laughs> I think I made that quite clear the other week. I, I think you made that very clear the other week. I think you've just underlined that point this evening. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well, if you look at the indie man that you just said you spent forty pounds on three sessions, I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, obviously, not a London festival, so you have your travel on top of that and accommodation, etc. So, um, in London, I, I suppose you could get away with charging a little bit more. I would think at the very top end, depending what you get for it and the quality of the beers and the audience it's targeting, um, maybe £20 for a day ticket if it's something really worth going to. I don't know. What, what did we pay for the Great British Beer Festival? Great, Great British Beer Festival is relatively cheap, to be honest. It's about... 10 quid a ticket i think yeah. i got it for eight pound last year because i was a camera member at the time but but then obviously you have to buy your beers once once you're in there I, th I think i think the one festival that we've probably not spoke about is the london craft beer festival so not to be confused with the london craft beer carnival um but the london craft beer festival that runs at the same time as the great british beer festival part of london london beer city um i think they charge about 30 quid for for the ticket but then there's it's free tasters 
as as long as you're in there. So you're not buying any of your beers, yeah. but you paid 30 quid to get in. Now, I've bought a ticket to that this year um, because I've not been to it before. And a, a lot of people have spoken very highly about the event. So I I wanted to go along. But for me, I'd, I'd say that that's probably the upper echelons of what I'd mm-hmm. be prepared to pay for a beer festival is about 30 quid. Yeah. So like I said the last time we were talking about festivals, festivals for me are about meeting people that we know, interacting with people and seeing what they think about beers they're drinking and hoping to get some decent beers myself. So I don't want to pay too much. 20 quid would probably be probably be my top limit for something that is a mix of craft and real ale like GBBF is. If Indie Man was down here, from what I've heard from you about Indie Man and all the reports, then, you know, I, I would stump up 30 quid for that. Um, just because it sounds like a a pretty decent show. <laughs> well, you can, buy, you can buy a full fat ticket, which is Thursday night, Friday afternoon, Friday night, Saturday afternoon, Saturday night and Sunday session. That will cost you £42. So you can buy one ticket that will get you into every session at Indie Man for less than a single session at London Craft Beer Carnival. Yeah. I think that speaks volumes. Yeah. But, I mean, a day ticket, 20 quid, I think would be my, my top, unless it was something really special. And I knew there was going to be a, a good draw of people and a lot of variety there. But 50 quid a session is obviously... That's just... I'm at a loss for words. You're speechless. I, I can, I can, I, I can absolute, see you speechless. The listeners can't see that. But absolutely I can see you, you. no justification yeah. for 50 quid a session. It's a complete piss take. They should be fucking ashamed of themselves. Ashamed, Stephen. Okay. Well, let's <laughs> let's see what our listeners think this week. So tweet us using the hashtag Hot Topic. Let us know a couple of things this week. Firstly, um, what's the most you'd be willing to pay for a beer festival? And secondly, uh, and this is more of a personal one, if you are going to Indie Man, let us know what sessions you're going to as well. Um, because I've already tried to keep track of the amount of people that we know and we interact with on our timeline that are going. And it seems like Saturday afternoon is going to be one hell of a party. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> Hashtag hot topic. How much would you pay for a festival and what session are you going to at Indie Man? And if you are at Indie Man and you know what Steve looks like, hang out by the, by the Magic Rock store <laughs> and wait for when he turns the corner and he spies it and the little look on his face that, where he gets all lit up. Like that. <laughs> Apparently it was quite the sight last year. <laughs> was that Thornbridge with Halcyon? It was it was Thornbridge when they put house in on and That's I spied it. it from the other side of the room. Apparently <laughs> I skipped across the room. Downed what was in your glass and skipped. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's get on to this week's beer, which is called it's a hellish good beer apparently, according to the bottle. Handcrafted in Wales from the Wayne Brewery. I'm apologies if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. It is called Pamplemousse, which is French grapefruit. So I've actually done a Google. Check me out. Can I just say, I, I didn't know that until about five minutes before we started recording and Same. Miles tweeted a picture of a grapefruit on top of a glass. And I was like, why is he doing that? And and then it all sunk in. But there is an amazing aroma coming out of that bottle the minute, the minute it cracked the lid. It is all grapefruity goodness, but there's a little bit of... It's, it's like grapefruits and, and cream. It's almost like a grapefruit mm. yogurt that's coming out of that bottle. Quite nice, isn't it? Very soft. It's a lovely pour on it as well. A lovely light golden colour. Big, white, fluffy head. Nice carbonation on it. Oh, my word. The aromas coming off of that are just... um, They're just out of this world. Wow. Nice clarity on it as well. Lovely clear glass. Yeah, I I can see why this comes so highly recommended. Nice soft fruits coming off it. It's not the... The nose burning grapefruit that I thought it might be. No. Very gentle aromas. And it looks delicious. It does look delicious. Shall we um I'm looking forward to this. I've got my, got got the guzzling glass out tonight. <laughs> so because I'm expecting it to be a guzzler. So I, I am properly looking forward to getting into this. Yeah, I should uh... say it's a four point two percent pale ale. So <laughs> guzzler indeed. Get into it, mate. Let's go. Cheers. Cheers. 
Ooh. Oh, oh there's a thick dryness on that. It's, it's there's there's floral notes going on in there. There's a lovely dry finish to it. Oh, that's I'm, I need to go back in for a little more, bit more of that. There's dryness on the top, but it's really light underneath. It's refreshing. It's mouth watering and. It is. I mean, it's everything you'd you'd expect from the, the hops that are in there, um, which wonderfully they've put on the side of the bottle so that we can share those. Um, so you've got Cascade, you've got Citra, and you've got Mosaic. Now, that's a combination to absolutely die for. I love Citra and Mosaic hops. They're working so well together in this beer. Yeah. They're, they're balanced so well. Um, it then goes on to say that they're... That they're they're in there for a fruity and fresh summer beer. And I don't think you can argue with that statement. It, no. it is all of the above. Now, there's a, there's a lovely, very very gentle biscuitiness to it, right underneath that bitterness. But, I mean, I want to say it's a, I want to say it's a thick refreshingness coming through. That dryness kind of just sits on top. But then the main body of it is this lovely, refreshing wave of beer. I mean, this would, yeah, be, this, this would be so nice to have in, in the garden in the sunshine. That That is an absolute stunner of, of a beer. I've, I've really, really been looking forward to this one. Um, like I say, it's, it's something that has, has been recommended to us before that we should try. And when, when we first thought about putting this season together, this was kind of the one that I, I, I instantly thought of um, as the Welsh representative. Um, so a little bit of background about the Wayne Brewery, um, formed in 2009 by Sue Haywood and John Martin. Um, in 2010 and 11, they won Seba gold medals for, for their beers, um, silver and gold medals for their beers. Um, they're based in Lanidlos, uh, where they have a brewery, a shop and a bar. I probably pronounced that wrong as, as well, but I'm sure somebody will correct us. Um, <laughs> you know, it seems to be the thing. Let's put a correction in at the beginning of the show. Um, so within their core range, they've got Pamplemousse. They've got uh, a rudimental IPA. They've got Snowball, which is a choc vanilla and coconut stout. Ooh. They've got Western Special. <laughs> do, you want, do you want me just to pause on that <laughs> choc vanilla and coconut stout for a second? Ooh. You all right now? I'm, I'm, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Um, Western Special, which is a West Coast Palau. They've got a chili plum porter and oh. lemon drizzles. Oh. As, as well. um, that's their core range. They, By the sounds <laughs> of it, they do some amazingly flavoured beers. Um, you find out all the details uh, about the Wayan um, at thewayanbrewery.co.uk and that's W-A-E-N brewery.co.uk. i tell you um, what, I had no exposure to these guys before tonight and from the sound of those, from the sound of those beers, this is a brewery I can get behind. Just give me some of that, some of those flavors. <laughs> it's just just that list of, of flavors that were going going down there. Um, yeah, it, it seems they really know how to get the best out of the ingredients that they use. Anyway, this beer four point two percent, but that dryness kind of really gives it. A, a body that you wouldn't expect from a 4.2, even from a pale even, you wouldn't expect that kind of level of dryness from no. a pale. They're really getting their money's worth out of these hops, I'll tell you what. It's, um, it is a lovely beer. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. As, as I say, those hops, I, I can pick out the citra and the mosaic in there working together because I think they're two very distinct hops. Uh, I'm gonna go for that. The cascade is, is is used in there for aroma because the aroma seems to be um, a lot more floral and citrusy mm -hmm. than than you would get from the other two. Um, it does finish. It's incredibly dry on the finish, but that dryness is also so refreshing as yeah. as well. And you, you know, like I say, at four point two percent, this is one that you could very easily find yourself having a incredible afternoon session on in 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 the summer. Yeah, I'm not like I've, everyone knows I'm not a, 
a fan of the usually dry flavors, but that refreshing underbelly kind of is enough to keep the dryness at bay just a little bit without it letting overwhelm anything. And yeah, that citron was. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just. <laughs> I mean, this this is a great beer. This is a fantastic beer. This has been a real highlight of this season so far. And and the great news for our listeners is is that the, the Wayen Brewery are now being stocked by Ebria as as well. So you can get this beer and all of those others from the core range from Ebria, and you can obviously get those with a bit of a discount thanks to the the, the discount that the guys have given us. Mm. Nice. Okay, I don't. Not much else for me to say about this one. Um, I'm just going to continue enjoying this for a bit, <laughs> I, I think. I'm, I'm not actually going to rush to finish it for once. <laughs> well, since we mentioned Ebria, we have um, an Ebria-related announcement. We do, yes. We, it's um, Our competition is now... I say competition, it's more of a giveaway. You haven't had to do anything, really, to, <laughs> to, to win. You just had to enter. Um, so yeah, we had three giveaways running with, with Ebria over the last few weeks, and um, pleased to announce the winners of the the, the three various competitions. Still calling it a competition. The, the three various giveaways th- this evening. So um, first of all, and all of these have just been drawn randomly from from those that have entered as well. So we, we've not picked any of them. We've used a n- random number generator that that we've used before. It's one that we found online that you just fire up, you put in a number, and it gives you an answer. It's a simple that so first up uh the instagram prize this prize prize this no more winner um is pippin fault um i can't actually remember which one it was that he (laughs) posted but it was one of the winners from the last few weeks congratulations mr pippin fault uh you are going to get a box of ebria beers heading your way soon if you can dm us your address if you haven't already done so um and then secondly the the winner of the twitter competition this was a simple click here enter tweet about it and you go into a draw that goes to david johnson who can be found at hang the double underscore dj congratulations david again if you can dm us your email um, not your email address, just DM us your home address and we'll, we'll get the box of beers sent to you. And then finally, and this is going to be the most interesting one, um, people that are listening to this may have already seen us tweet about the previous two winners before the show's been released this week. We haven't tweeted about this one because we don't just want a random coming forward and saying it's them. So we're, we're going to assume that it's somebody that actually listens to the show because this person went to iTunes and they left us a review and a rating. But we have no idea who <laughs> Fender underscore Blender is. If that is you, can you send us a DM on Twitter and let us know it's you and tell us what it was that you said in your review as well. Um, and we'll make sure that you get your box of ears as well. So congratulations to um, Pippin Fault, Fender underscore Blender and Hang the Double underscore DJ for being our Ebria giveaway winners. Hey. And also thanks to Ebria for supplying yes. the, um, the the prizes for that particular giveaway as well. Indeedy. Thank you, Ebria, and thank you everyone who entered and took the time to tweet, iTunes review, and Instagrammers. How are you going with this beer, mate? Still really enjoying it, mate. Yeah. It's, um, there's just so much going on in terms of the flavours. It's everything I want. It's, it's citrus and it's crisp up front. That gives way to uh, a lovely soft bitterness in the middle, and then you get this. That just then suddenly gives way, and you get this long, dry finish to it. And it's it's just all so well balanced. It's um it's a perfect example of a of a pale ale. Oh, a pale ale. Oh wow! <laughs> right, have we got an Instagram of the week, mate? We do, but it's sadly this is this is back to being prizeless uh, <laughs> again. So um, if you want to enter your own um, picture into our prize, this prize to win the biggest box of nothing there is, um, just put your picture up on Instagram. Use the hashtag Cheers Guys, and you could be in a chance in with a chance of winning a great big box of nothing. Just like weld underscore of underscore beercraft has this week with uh, a lovely black and white image of founders dark 
Penance, Imperial Black India Pale Ale. Pale Ale? Yeah, I've just read those words. Imper- <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's an Imperial Black IPA, basically. Okay. Um, it's a really nice picture. Oh, look I, at that. I, I think that's incredible. That's that pretty? Up on our Instagram account. It's on our Twitter feed, and it's also linked through to in the show notes. Very good. Right. Steve mentioned <laughs> <laughs> Steve mentioned earlier about how Ebria are offering, offering a discount code to our lovely listeners. As are Ales by Mail and Beautiful Beers. You can get 10% discount from all of them for Beer O'Clock Show listeners. Just go to the Beer O'Clock Show website, which is beeroclockshow.co.uk, and get all the details on our Season 7 beer list. Right down the bottom, there's the icons for the shops. Click on them. That the discount goes there before you click. Blah, blah, blah. You know how it works. <laughs> You'll figure it out. Uh, what's coming up next week, buddy? Right, well, next week we are going to be looking forward to Beer Day Britain, which is happening on Monday, June the 15th. We have got a very special guest on the show with us. Um, so, Mark, you don't just get me to yourself anymore for <laughs> one episode in this series. We, we have a guest coming on next week. Um, we've got Jane Payton coming on, who is a beer sommelier, and she's also the person behind Beer Day Britain. She's coming on the show with us, and hopefully, I say hopefully at this moment, because the beer still hasn't turned up, we are going to be drinking the beer that has been brewed for Beer Day Britain, which is called Britannia's Brew. It's a 5% golden owl with added botanicals that represent the home nations. Now, there's a there's some words in there that make me worry. And or there's a word that wor- makes me worry, which is the word botanicals. It's it's not golden owl. I'm I'm quite happy with the fact that we're doing a five percent golden owl. I, I'm concerned about the botanicals because I'm guessing that that might start edging it towards Saison territory. But we'll see. Um that's the beer we're hoping to do. Wild if the beer doesn't arrive in turn in time we might be drinking something else, but <laughs> won't know until next week. But we do have something special lined up in case we don't have it. We do indeed, Jess. Yeah. Right, that's next week. You can find us online at beeroclockshow.co.uk, on Twitter at beeroclockshow, on Instagram at beeroclockshow, on Untapped at beeroclockshow. Steve, I'm on Untapped at Beer Show Mark, and I'm on Twitter at beer show mark this week's beer from wales has been pamplemousse from the wayne brewery 4.2 point 4.2 percent pile aisle doesn't taste like a 4.2 percent beer it is smashing dry hoppy not, not so hoppy lovely fruit cutting through lovely refreshing beer steve's raving about it he loves it I'm raving about Stunning. it. I love it. Stunning beer. Yeah. Well done. Can 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 we just say thanks to to Sue at, at the Wayne Brewery as well because she sent us these yes. um, beers to to try on this evening's show and and she sent us a few of these so so we did distribute a few of them to the the beer o'clock show faithful as well so there's a few people drinking pample mousse this week as a, as a, as a result um, thanks for sending them through it's been a stunning beer I've really enjoyed trying it um, and I'm actually probably off to hit, hit up Ebria and get the rest of the beers from, <laughs> from the range because I, I want to give them a try now. If you can get me a box as well, mate, that would be much appreciated. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that's stout. That's stout. Sound. Oh, my God, that's stout. Oh, dear. Oh, do you love me some stouts? Right, until next week, matey. It's been the highlight of my week. And mine.